And uh, here's a beautiful new Asus ARM-powered Windows 10 laptop. So hi, so who are you? So I'm Andrew, I work for Qualcomm. And so we're showing all of the, uh, the new windows on Snapdragon devices. And uh, this is a very cool, what's the size of the display right here? 13 inch? 13.3 yeah, 13 inch. Yeah. Uh, we have a full HD with a very nice touch experience, very good keyboard. And uh, we can look around at some ports right here, two USB 3 ports, charger, charger, HDMI output, SIM card slot, headset connector. So it's and like then, the basic stuff that people want right. for a laptop. Right. So it's, it's that uh, it's that uh, highly portable mobile professional type type device. But and then and in terms of user experience, you're going to get similar experience to what you'd normally expect for performance for any thin light fanless design. But then we have some really significant advantages. Fingerprint also. No, I guess, yeah, fingerprint on there. I haven't used that, so I couldn't tell you how well So it it's like totally integrated that. with all the security stuff you have on the Snapdragon. You have everything in there. So this, this security in this case is handled on the Windows side of things. So it's the Windows. And then, and then of course, it does use, use the uh, chipset capabilities as well. So it's, you know, you were using all of the capabilities that you have from the Snapdragon 835 from the mobile space. And then we add, and then we bring the Windows 10 experience to that. And it's a uh, very hardware accelerated. Everything is like super smooth already. Everything's it's ready for shipping. Everything is right? very optimized. Yes. Yeah, so these, this was announced in December. That was the first time that anyone got their hands onto it. So a lot of people got to test it out a little bit and see what they thought. And their overall reviews have been very positive. And it flips as a tent all flips the way around. As, flips as tent all the way around. Tablet mode in this direction. And it's a good weight. Not yeah, it's, it's really solid and stable. I've always liked the clamshell design myself because it's it's just more stable in your lap, and then you can. But then, but then we also have there are the other tent mode type devices with the uh, with the folding key, detachable keyboards and that stuff on. This there. is the real laptop form factor, and with a touch, because people once they touch, they kind of get used to it, and they want to touch again and again. That's true. And then, and then if you don't have touch, you still. That's touch been the my experience as yeah. well. Like I'm just starting to use these devices that actually have touch in them, and now I'm starting to poke everything, and it just. Yeah. So when when, when, it, when it launches, when you get it, um, right here, does it show, um, by default, is, is mostly it's going to be Windows S, 10S? Yeah, so all three designs from Asus, HP, and Lenovo are launching with Windows 10S. Uh, and then, and then the idea there is that Microsoft is working really hard. They, they're big believers in the in the 10s platform. They want people to give it a shot, see how see how they like it. If they can get everything, people can get everything they want out of the Microsoft Store. Then the 10s platform will be will be a more stable, secure, cleaner cleaner updates and installs. Like, uh, the App Store model, right? Right. It's so the you App don't, Store you don't model. Get any viruses? Any? Yeah. It's it's secure, optimized, and stable. If there's something that you absolutely have to have that's not on the Microsoft Store at then this point right in time, here, it says change then, to Pro. Then you switch to 10 Pro, and then and then you install your app, and then and then it's not it doesn't change it doesn't change the operating system. 10s, 10 Pro is the same operating system. It's just a matter of what of what you have access to for install. And, and so 10, it just kind of you're taking you're taking your security and performance into your own hands when you go 10 Pro. 10 Pro is every x86, 32 bits is okay. Yep. Right? Yeah. You'll run it on Any there app. if it if it's if it's a if it's a Win32 application, it'll run in emulation. But Microsoft has done a really fantastic job with the emulation layer on the ARM on the uh, Snapdragon platform. And the result of that is that you actually it, the performance you, you really don't see any hit to the performance at all. It's great. So I think this is really beautiful laptop, and actually the price is quite good, huh? Yeah, the price the price is good. It starts at five ninety nine, uh, and that's for the uh, the four gig RAM, and then I forget what hard drive size. But then they have a second tier. That goes that goes up from there, but it's still it's very affordable, and uh, and the part and, of the marketing is you're talking about crazy huge battery life. Uh, yeah. Just before actually it stopped, I was watching here. It was playing a video for 20 hours and 37 minutes. Yeah, so this we just, the HP. we had a, we had a 1080p video, and we we put the device on 50% brightness and just started looping a 1080p video and see how long it goes. We got over 20 hours with that, and that's what we're quoting is over 20 hours battery life. And uh, and so and so Asus, you'll see similar numbers. Lenovo, similar numbers. And then on top of on top of battery life, you'll also see uh, we have we have the integrated LTE. So our our you know obviously we're coming from the smartphone space. So our chips have LTE in them. It doesn't take up any additional space on the PCB, and you're getting that best LTE experience in the world with the Qualcomm modem. And we think this will really change how people use their PC because when you're connected everywhere, 
you're not having to jump from hotspot to hotspot and figure out where Wi-Fi is. It's just like when you use your phone. You're not you're not necessarily thinking, is there Wi-Fi here? You've got LTE, you've got your data, you've got your email, your Facebook, whatever it is you're trying to do, it's already there. We think people really are missing out by not treating their laptops the same way. It's your bread and butter doing uh, LTE uh, kind of stuff, right? It's a uh, Qualcomm specialty. Oh yeah, this is something. Uh, cellular, right? Yeah, and yeah. you're putting it right here and hopefully people are going to get it bundled, right, with their LTE subscriptions. So yeah, so I mean it'll be it'll be defined carrier by carrier, retailer by retailer, but all of those are being worked out now about of how exactly they're incentivizing and supporting the LTE on the cellular plan. Uh, the other thing that I should point out about how how we're bringing the cellular experience to the laptop is the is the uh, active standby and the instant on. So right now, when my phone screen is blank, we all know that my smartphone isn't actually shut down. It's syncing with emails. It's listening for phone calls. It's getting text messages. Whatever it is that's going on, my phone is aware of it. And then it's instant on as soon as I'm ready. It doesn't boot back up, come out of hibernate, and it's all ready to go. That's another thing that we're bringing to the laptop experience, the Windows 10 experience, is that as soon as you as soon as you open up the device. It's been syncing and it's ready to go. In theory, you could have LEDs showing if you have notifications or something. Yeah, I mean, you can pop in notifications, sounds, lights, whatever it is, because it it's because it's aware. Yeah, because it's aware of it. It's behaving just like a cell phone in, in that theory, way. In they could even have a tiny little display here or something. Sure. That kind of says, hey, uh, you should, you need to check your emails. And so that's that's one thing that we're looking forward to as this matures. There's a lot of it's a lot of testing going on. You know, we're seeing like how well does this stick? This is first round of of devices. We think it is a huge advantage because the user experience in terms of performance is consistent with what people already know. Yeah. But then you add those 20 plus hours of, of battery life, yeah. that active standby and cellular connectivity, and the end result is that you've got something with significant advantages. And what we're hoping to see over time is that devices start getting designed around what the Snapdragon can really do because you don't need as thick of a device because you don't need to dissipate as much heat. You can put larger batteries in because the PCB doesn't take up as much space. And you can really think of it in a different way and start designing around that. And so that's what we're really looking forward to. As this evolves, we really expect the PC space to start adapting to what we're really capable of. And uh, innovation is going to start happening in this space. It has to. It has to. I mean, when you have a lack of competition, innovation stops. And so this is where we're starting to kind of change things up a little bit in the PC space. Let's mix mix it up a little bit. Let's let's think about it differently. Let's bring some of the advantages that we've been developing from the cellular space, put it into the laptop, and see where it goes and see where we can go from there. I think it's good for everyone. I think even even our competitors are going to have to start thinking again about how they're designing their processors and their modems and their devices so that they can do the types of things that we're bringing forward because we think there's a whole lot of value to it. They're already trying to to uh, react to what you're doing, I think. Yeah, we and just, right here you, show, you have a demo that's looping, that's showing uh, yeah. that basically all the stuff people usually do is just at full speed. Yeah, so what we did is, is this is actually, this isn't a video, this is a recording of keyboard and mouse. So yeah. we recorded keyboard and mouse, and then because we couldn't move it fast enough, we sped up the, the mouse and keyboard even faster. And so we've got it very confidently moving through. Running real apps. Charts. Yeah, this is running real apps. They're all open at the same time. We're copying and pasting in between them. We're browsing the web, playing video. And this is to show just the user experience. It, this is basically what could be considered full speed. Because a user can't expect anything faster than that. No, it, I mean, I can't, I can't instant, even move right? the mouse that fast. So people talking about <laughs> benchmarks, no, I mean, like talking about something that's irrelevant. Essentially, no, I mean, can do everything you benchmarks, want benchmarks have their place in some very specific things when you're trying to compare two devices on one, one very specific no, thing. <laughs> But when you're starting to look at the overall experience and how people actually use the device, The benchmarks really start to fade in importance. They don't account for modem. They don't account for battery life, and like, and and, uh, and whether something takes you know one second versus 1.1 seconds. I mean, that's a 10 percent. But does it really matter to the person, or would they rather have 20 hours of battery life and always be connected on LTE? The app is already pre-run before you even click because it's smart. You know, it's usually sometimes apps are kind of like. Like uh, Chrome, for this example, loads websites before you even click on the right. link. Right. Yeah. Intelligence. Intelli I mean, this is this is like the old the old saying. You you work smarter, not harder. <laughs> so, so efficiency and intelligence are really the hallmarks of our platform. Let's jump in here. Is this video that they are showing, uh, so if I can jump over here, it's it's running a game right now. Can you, can you play? Oh man, terribly. Yeah. We'll try. So uh, right here, you're showing that. 
people don't want to play, they, they will just be able to well, play. And right. The I mean, happens. now, of course, this, this type of device, no matter who makes the processor, it's not going to be your gaming rig that you hook up your VR headsets and do the craziest things in the world. And this is the Lenovo? This is the, the Lenovo Mix 630. Right. So similar similar form factor to what HP has done. <laughs> a little bit different, a little bit of difference in the keyboard. Uh, but uh, you uh, use similar design, uh, also using Snapdragon 835. And everything is through the Type-C right here? It does, the type -C here, right? It does an HDMI output? Yep. It yeah, does so a got, USB uh, we've controller? We've got it connected to just a little, a little adapter that has the USB, the power, and the HDMI just all running through it. And it's always doing display port kind of an output maybe? Yeah, yeah, probably. It's a display port over USB-C to HDMI through the dongle, that, that type of setup, yeah. But then this is all through Type-C, but this design here has more Right, this ports. one has this one has more of the full-size ports. Snapdragon 835 does not have issues with the number of ports and stuff you can do. Like, you can do you can do two full-size USB 3, that's pretty awesome. On a, and a, yeah, I mean, and really, that's, that's not a matter of, of hard hardware support is a matter of design decisions. You can make a thinner device if you have fewer ports, but then you have fewer ports. So it's it's the trade-offs that they look into. So so all these they look like final, they look like ready. So how soon is it shipping? So we don't have we don't have announced chip dates for many of the manufacturers yet. The Asus and HP are are expected to be earlier. They were announced sooner, but they'll be Q1 this year, and then uh, and then we'll wait and see when Lenovo announces their launch dates. And all of these have uh, 1080p panels. 1080p that displays. helps with your battery life, right? 10 versus 4K definitely. So I mean, you could like our chips are obviously capable of handling 4K. We've been talking about 4K on the mobile space for a long time. 835 is no exception to that, but. Uh, but 1080p is is a good sweet spot between between pixel density on the smaller displays like this, and uh, and then and then uh, efficiency and cost. Frankly, I mean, you could have a 4K panel, but your battery life will go down uh, on any on any uh, processor architecture, and your battery life will also go down. And Wait, uh, did I say? Did I already say? Did I say battery life twice? Cost yeah. goes up, battery goes down. Those are yeah. the two things. <laughs> and I think uh, 845 was announced at, at the event in December, right? Right. And. Uh, well, it's probably going to be a fit with this platform too. Yeah, so we well, announced that this is. For I mean, obviously, future. right. That's that's the announcement, right? And so this is a this is a multi generational, multi platform endeavor with us and Microsoft. This is not just we're going to try it once and see how it goes. We're committing to you know a, a long term thing. This is this we're going to we're going to take this as far as we can. So it definitely doesn't stop with 835. Get 845 in there. And uh, that that means a bump again in performance. Oh, it's only going to go up. Announced, it's right? only going to go up from here, of course. Yeah. So I mean, the things that we haven't announced is A45 is obviously our next chip on the mobile space. Whether it's that specific chip or whether we do anything different, that's what we haven't announced yet. But we're definitely taking the platform forward from here. And behind you, there were some animations saying 5G. So that's definitely going to be there too, I guess. 5G is going to be everywhere, right? 5 5G, 5G. I mean, 5G. The overall timeline. We're looking at deployments in 2019. Uh, that's that's when network and devices will all be starting to come together, and we'll start seeing that. So if it's called 855 or 900 or whatever it's called, it's probably going to run Windows 10 too. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to keep on. We're going to keep on going with this. Cool. Yeah.